Here's a fluid mechanics question based on conservation of energy. So this means uh, using Bernoulli's theorem. Okay, and this is the kind of question that you would see as a first year engineering student. And if you'd like to see anything similar to this in the future, or if you have any suggestions regarding any topics or any specific problems on maths, physics, engineering, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. So let's read the problem and let's see how to approach this. So we've got a container that is h meters tall, right? And this container has a hole at lowercase h distance away from the from the bottom. And through this hole, through this orifice, the water leaves uh, the container, right? And at first it will have a horizontal velocity and then after it leaves the container it will be subjected to free fall okay so let's see how to how to approach this keep in mind that what we actually have to, to find is we would have to plot the this distance x so this is sort of the range of the water leaving the container as a function of small h and uh, lowercase and uppercase h. Okay, and the, uh, the next question is, what's the ratio of h over h for which that distance is maximum? So to do this, one uh, simple way to, to approach this is, first of all, we can see that this satisfies all Bernoulli assumptions, which means that we can take a streamline from the surface and we can follow the streamline into this orifice and we can apply uh, Bernoulli between this point. So let's call this point one and this would be point two. Okay. Now, the reason why we picked those two points will become apparent in a second. So let's apply Bernoulli's theorem. So to do that, I'm going to write that P1 plus half rho V1 squared plus rho G z1. So I'm going to write Bernoulli's theorem in the most general way possible. So that would be equal to p2 plus half rho v2 squared plus rho g z2. Okay, now p1 and p2 we actually sort of know what they are, right? Because 1 and 2 are exposed to the outside environment, which means that p1 is actually equal to p2 and they're both equal to the atmospheric pressure. Okay, so when we put those back into Bernoulli's equation, they will cancel out, as you'll see in a second. In addition to that, this tank has a cross-sectional area much greater than the cross-sectional area of this orifice, right? And because of that, we can actually assume that the velocity v1 is very small okay or we can say that velocity one is much smaller than velocity two and that's because mass conservation has to hold um, which means that in this equation here we can ignore this term right we can assume it's negligible and the other thing we have to do is we have to select a datum point or a datum line this is going to be the line along which potential energy will be zero. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to draw a line here at the bottom, and I'll say that on this line, along this line, the potential energy is equal to zero. So with this in mind, let's actually rewrite Bernoulli's equation with everything that we have uh, done so far. So I'm going to rewrite it. But instead of P1, I'm going to write PA, that's the atmospheric pressure. I'm not going to write this term because it's zero. Then I'm going to write plus rho g, and then z1 is the distance above the datum, which is capital H, right? Uppercase H, this. And this is equal to P2, which is, again, atmospheric pressure, plus half rho v2 squared. So this is the velocity that we're trying to actually find, plus, and then we have the potential energy at point two, which is rho g lowercase h. So we have rho g h. Now, the 
two atmospheric pressures cancel out, which is nice. And this gives us that half rho v2 squared will be equal to rho g times h minus h. So I just rearrange this um, to get the velocity by itself, right? So we can cancel out the rows, which will finally give us that v2 will be equal to square root of 2g times h minus h. Okay, that's so far so good. So we found the velocity uh, the water has when it leaves the tank. Okay, so that's the velocity. Let me just uh, clear this up a bit. This is the velocity here, and it's pointing, as you might imagine, maybe if I use a different color, that would be a bit more visible. Okay, this is the V2. So let's now try to calculate the distance that the um, water travels. Okay, so from the moment the water leaves the tank, it is subjected to free fall. Okay, so as it's subjected to free fall, it will move in the x direction. So let's say this is a water particle. Okay, and it's got this velocity as it comes out. So I'm just going to call this velocity v instead of v2, just to simplify things a bit. So this will be square root of 2g h minus h. And because it's going to be in free fall, we know how the trajectory is sort of going to look like. And it's going to be something like this, right? It's going to be a, a parabola, or a part of the parabola, rather. And what we're trying to find out is we try to find out an expression for this distance that they call capital X in the question. Now, to do this, we first look at the fact that this water particle has no vertical velocity, right? So I can write that y, that's the displacement in the in the vertical direction. Uh, and the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to measure everything from here. Okay, so my x-y coordinate system is essentially going to be placed where the water uh, comes out at the base of the tank soil. So this is going to be my x and y coordinate system, which means that my y coordinate for the um, uh, for this water particle will look like this. So this is going to be equal to h minus the acceleration, which is g over 2t squared, like that. Okay, so this tells us that at time equals zero, y is equal to h, which makes sense because the distance from the bottom of the tank to where the water comes out is lowercase h, right? So with this in mind, we can actually find uh, the time it takes uh, for the water particle. I'll put this in quotation marks. So for the water particle uh, to touch the ground. So to do this, all we have to do is just substitute y with 0, right? Because the water touches the ground here, and at this point, y is equal to 0. So here's what we have. We have 0 equals 2 h minus g over 2 t squared. So this gives us g over 2 t squared equals to small h, which means that t squared is equal to 2 h over g. Therefore, t, the time, is going to be equal to the square root of 2h over g, which is interesting because it actually tells us that the time for the water to fall all the way to touch the ground only depends on the height at which the, that orifice is located, right? So now let's actually find the range. So the range... is equal to, so as the water comes out, there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction, which means that the horizontal velocity will be equal to this until the water particle touches the ground here, okay? 
So we can write that x, right, the range is going to be equal to this velocity, which is going to be constant, multiplied by the time. So this is going to be v times t, which is square root of 2g, and then we have h minus h multiplied by the time, which is square root of 2h over g. So you'll notice that the g's cancel out. So the final result is going to be x equals 2, and then you have square root of small h times h minus x. Okay, and that is the range, uh, the formula for the range as a function of lowercase uh, h and uppercase h. So this means that the um, the, the range of the water depends on how tall, um, well, I would say how tall the container is, but it actually depends on capital H, which is how tall or what's the distance above the ground of the free surface, as well as the height of the, um, of the orifice, okay? So you can now do any kinds of plots you want. You can plot... Um, you can plot x as a function of h, but what I'll do now uh, is try to find, uh, so I'll answer the question about the maximum range. So find the value of h over h, right, such that x is maximum. So the way in which I'll do this is, first of all, I'll rewrite the range. So the range is going to be 2 times square root of h times h minus h. But I will actually treat, so I will treat lowercase h as the variable. Okay, so in other words, I'm saying that I have a tank, which is capital H meters tall, and then I have a choice. I can put my, I can create a hole, I can create an orifice at any height above the ground. And what I'm trying to answer is where should I make that orifice so that my range is going to be maximum, right? In other words, the, the independent variable, my uh, x in f of x is going to be small h. So to make this into a more, I guess, mathematically friendly uh, expression, I'm going to say that, okay, this is a function f of x, where this x is not the same as this x, by the way. This is just a, a dummy variable uh, x, which is which gives me that the function will be 2 times x times h minus x, right? So how do you find the maximum of this function? Well, you can try differentiating, and that's exactly what I'll do. So I'll do df by dx equals 0 to find the stationary points, and let's see what we get. So if I differentiate df by dx, which, um, let's actually move this to a new page. So df by dx equals, so the 2 is a constant, and then if I differentiate the square root, I'm going to get 2, uh, or 1 over 2 square root of x times h minus x. And then I have to differentiate again, right, because we're using the chain rule here. So if I differentiate what's inside the square root, I'm going to get capital H minus, well, 2x. And we put the condition that this is equal to 0, and then we have some cancellations. And we have a fraction that is equal to 0, right? We have this over this is 0, which means that for that to be possible, the numerator must be 0. So that means h minus 2x is equal to 0, which means that 2x is equal to h. Therefore, x is equal to h over 2. Now, remember, our independent variable is actually small h. So uh, this is the um, expression that we started from. Right, it's 2 times, and then we have h times h minus h. So what we found is that when 
lowercase h is capital H over 2. Uh, well, I'm going to say we have a stationary point. Okay, and mathematically speaking, we have to find the nature of that stationary point, but I'm not going to do this here. Uh, so to do this, you'll have to differentiate this expression again, and then substitute this value in the second derivative, and then check what's the sign of the second derivative. But you will see that this actually corresponds, or this corresponds to a local maximum. Okay, so in other words, when the height of the orifice, so remember, you you have a tank of height of height h uh, meters, and you can choose where to make that orifice. So what this tells you is, if you create an orifice at capital H over two, right? So if you create an orifice here, right in the middle, then the water that comes out will have maximum range, will travel the the farthest horizontally, right? And if you want at this point, you can also find the value of the range. So to find that you say, okay, so my maximum range is going to be equal to two multiplied by square root of capital H over two times capital H over two. And then this will be two times H over two and you'll get the value of H, which is interesting. So it tells you that the maximum range the water will travel is actually the same as the height of the free surface. Okay? And of course, from here on, you can uh, do the, the last part of the question by yourself. You can uh, sketch some plots for the case when h over h is either 0 0.4, 0 0.5, or 0 0.6. But um, that's the question. And um, uh, yeah, I hope you found it interesting.